I wanted to make a quick screencast for you as we begin thinking about equilibrium in the context of insoluble compounds. And so in chemistry, this concept is related to the solubility product constant, or KSP. A couple of things to know about KSP. KSP is always written in terms of an insoluble solid dissolving and dissociating into its constituent cations and anions. So to illustrate, I'm just going to choose a common insoluble salt. We're going to use lead to sulfate. Now lead to sulfate, if we were to think about the formula of this compound, remember cations and anions combine to form neutral ionic compounds, and lead is a plus two charge, and sulfur or sulfate is a minus two charge, so we just need a one-to-one -one ratio of lead ions to sulfate ions. Now KSP is always written based upon the dissociation of the solid into its constituent ions. Just have to remember that lead sulfate will break apart into lead 2 plus cations and polyatomic sulfate ions, which carry a minus 2 charge. So here in black, you see the overall balanced chemical equation for the dissociation of lead to sulfate. Now, the ex equilibrium expression for this, the equilibrium expression, which would be the law of mass action, it's a special designation. We give it the designation of this S and P, the solubility product constant for the equilibrium process. It's written the same way as any other law of mass action. Always products raised to their coefficients over reactants raised to their coefficients. But in this case, we remember that we don't include pure solids in our equilibrium expressions. So the KSP expression for this example would just be the product of the concentration of lead 2 plus ions and the concentration of sulfate ions. So there in blue, that would be the solubility product expression for the dissolution of lead to sulfate. Now we talked in class about the value of K and what it tells us about something. Now for a salt that's insoluble, we would expect its K value to be very small. And it's not surprising that the K value, the KSP value for lead to sulfate at 25 degrees Celsius has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus eighth. Now the extension for this is that this actually, this number value tells us something about how much is left in solution even though most of the substance does not dissolve. We can actually use this value for KSP to calculate how much lead ions and how much sulfate ions are in solution when that solution is saturated with lead sulfate, lead to sulfate. Now here's how we do that. We're going to fundamentally rely upon this expression. And if we know KSP, we can plug it in. The only thing we really have to think about is, well, we don't know the concentration of lead to plus ions, and we don't know the concentration of sulfate ions, but we do know something that's given to us from the equation. We know the stoichiometric proportions. We know from the equation that's balanced that for every one formula unit of lead sulfate, we're going to have one lead ion and one sulfate ion. So it dissociates in a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. That means if we have X molarity of lead to sulfate, it's going to dissociate into an equivalent concentration of lead 2 plus ions and sulfate ions. So now we can just use a variable into our expression in blue and figure out what the concentration of lead ions would be in a saturated solution of lead 2 sulfate. So the setup would look like this. KSP would be the concentration of lead 2 plus ions, which we don't know what it is, but we can solve for it plug in the variable X, plug in that same variable X for sulfate, and again, they're both X because it dissociates in a one-to-one -one ratio, so they're going to be equal in concentrations, assuming there's no other source of lead or sulfate in our water sample. And now this value just becomes equal to KSP, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 8. So if we simplify this a bit, 
We have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 8 equals x times x. It's x squared. And now we can solve for x. Just take the square root of both sides. And x equals 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4th. Now remember, square brackets mean concentration and molarity. So this is going to be the concentration of both the lead ions and the sulfate ions. But as environmental chemists, we're, we're quite a bit more concerned with the concentration of lead to plus ions in our water supply. So this is how you think through a problem like the problem I'm asking you to do for homework tonight. Pause this video, go back, and then work through question three, A through D.